Hello, Matthew Williams with a very quick and to the point way of keeping your machine clean. First, go to this following website, security.collar.de, which is the official website of Spybot Search and Destroy. Click on download. No need to have the new two point version. Go for Spybot Search and Destroy 1.62, download it from Safer Networking, and install it on your machine. When you have it installed on your machine, it'll look a little something like this. This is Spybot Search and Destroy. Click on Search for Updates. It will ask you which country you want to go for. I tend to use TU Branschweig in Europe. It's a fast server. Click on Continue. Download all the updates. Then press Immunize. You cannot have any browsers open. If you close your browser down, and it doesn't want to go, start the task manager, press this button here to make them alphabetically ordered, and click on Firefox, Chrome, or Internet Explorer, and press End Process. That will kill off your browser. Then it's safe for you to apply the immunize function. As you can see, I've immunized before, so I haven't got too many things unprotected, 132. But when I press immunize, these numbers come down, and the machine will then be fully immunized. Then you can press search and destroy. You can do that whilst it's immunizing if it's going to take a while. Search and destroy, click check for problems on the top left. Now this is the bit that takes the long time. Here we are, click clean up my temporary files, which it will try and do. And then you wait whilst the lower left will start clicking out all the things it's checking for and it will show you a green bar which goes from left to right which will mean 100% and finished. Just wait for that. It may take half an hour on some slow machines. It could take up to an hour. As you can see here, the SpyBot program has found two things. So they're ticked and then we click on Fix Selected Problems. It says, are you sure you wish to continue? Yes. Now sometimes it will have to reboot your machine and do a spybot check before the system starts. So if you restart now, you may, if some of these ticks haven't become big green ticks, have to do a full spybot scan before the system starts up and then you'll be fully clean. Okay, back on Google, we type in malware bytes. Don't download it from the malware bytes organization, download it from cnet.com. Very good reason for this because you don't have to supply them with an email and it doesn't come with any little bits of nagware that would come from the main site if you got it from malware by its own site. So there we are. Download the file, install the file. Okay, here's the file ready to install. So we install English, next. I accept the agreement, next, next. Anti malware. Create a desktop icon, install. Then it'll do its updates, and just at the end, make sure you untick Enable Free Trial of Malware Anti-Malware Pro, and click Finish, because this is Nagware again. It'll connect to the server, it'll download its updates, and then it'll come onto its main screen. Now, you have three choices. Quick scan, full scan, or flash scan. Quick scan's normally good for most machines. If you've never done it before and you want to be sure, do a full scan, but this will take a couple of hours. A quick scan will probably take about 15, 20 minutes. So let's see if we've got anything. Let the numbers count up and wait the 15, 20 minutes. Whilst that's happening, go back to Google, type in unlocker, and hit enter. Download it from Softpedia this time and click the download section here, download. Click one of the mirrors, I'll choose the UK. Click save file, save it somewhere on your hard drive. When that's ready, click install. Next, I agree. Uh, then choose advanced, because you do not want, go back, click advanced and untick 
the delta toolbar. You do not want the delta toolbar. Okay. Click next. Click a knocker, a blocker, and it should be installed. Okay. Now, how to clean your machine? Open your my computer and say computer. Go to the C drive, which is your main hard drive. Go to your users and go to the name of your user. Go to app data, local, temp. Highlight everything in this folder. Hold down the shift key and press delete. This will delete the items without them going into your recycle bin. If it finds anything that it cannot delete, tick this box that says do for all current items and skip. Everything that's left behind are things that cannot be deleted because they're in use by the system. We'll come back to this later on. Go to the C drive, go to Windows, scroll down to the temp folder, highlight everything or press Control A, hold down the shift, press delete to permanently delete and press yes and skip it, anything it can't do. I'm not a great believer in the use of System Restore, so go to the Control Panel and turn System Restore off. Uh, system Restore can sometimes get your system back, but most of the time it just causes more damage by reverting to a bad copy of the operating system which has some still bad files in it. So go to Advanced System Settings, System Protection, go to the C drive, Configure, and turn off System Protection. It will warn you, say OK. Then, to avoid the nagging screens that keep on going, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure, come to the control panel and go to Users, User Accounts. Go to Change User Account Settings. And this will probably be here for you, but you dial this little bar down to the bottom which says Never Notify. Click on OK, and then it's time to reboot your system. Getting rid of the system protection, which will allow you to turn back time, which is kind of like a backup, but it's a backup that doesn't work very well. Um, getting rid of that will recover hundreds of gigabytes, in some cases, of data space on your hard drive. So if you're getting low on space, do that and then turn it back on. And by turning it back on, you'll delete all the old historical uh, protection points, but then as of today, you'll create a new one. So you'll get hundreds of gigabytes back, and then slowly over a period of time it'll start to build those files up again. Now for those hard to delete files, we'll use Unlocker. So we're going to go to the C drive, Users, Dvixer, go to my Application Data, Local, and the Temp folder. So we're going to select everything apart from the folder called Camrec, because that's where I'm recording this, and we're going to right click and we're going to use the unlocker feature. It tells us which programs are actually using these locked files. What we do is we say we wish to delete them on the left hand side, we unlock all and we watch the files be deleted. If they cannot be deleted now, the machine will offer you the option of rebooting the machine as it has done here and it will get rid of the files on next reboot. This is very good for getting files which will not delete off your machine, such as video files which have become locked. Now it's time to defragment your hard drive. Go to Start, All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, uh, Defragmenter, which I have actually got a, a different one here, but you will have Defragment there. I have a program called Disk Keeper 2011, which is a very good piece of software. And you can then defragment your hard drive. Follow the instructions accordingly. But for me, it looks like this. Disk Keeper starts, and I decide which hard drive I'd like to defrag. I right click, and I do optimize, which is to defrag the hard drive. For you, it'll probably just be select the drive and press defragment. This takes a long time. It's best done at night and come back to your machine in the morning. Now how about those nagging programs that start when this machine starts, such as Skype and various other things? Go to the start bar and in the box here 
type in msconfig. If you're working on Windows XP, go to the start bar, click run, and in the run box, do the same thing, msconfig, msconfig, click enter. Now, do not touch anything in the general tab, anything in the boot tab, anything in the services tab, only go to the startup tab. Move these bars along so you can see where the programs are and what their names are. It will help you to understand what you're about to start or stop. Most of these that are ticked here can actually be unticked and the system will start fine. Although I take no responsibility for that, it should be okay. Um, always keep things like antiviruses active. Um, Anti-spyware programs do not have to be active, but an antivirus will. Um, Eraser doesn't need to start. Skype doesn't need to start. You can start that manually. Um, Adobe Updater utility is not required. Um, things like Log Me In you would probably want to leave active. Um, AVG Internet, these bits here are to do with AVG, so that I'll leave those. Um, Adobe files to do with Creative Cloud must stay, otherwise your Creative Cloud won't work. But don't worry, because anything you've t unticked here, later on you should be able to tick back again if you come down to the bottom and do an MS config again and bring up the startup bit. So anything that you've decided you should have left on, you can re-tick, reboot the machine, and it'll come back. So once you've ticked, unticked all the things you don't want, such as Acrobat, Tray, Updaters, Apple Push, Apple updaters, um, you know, Logitech files, QuickTime updaters, Steam client updaters, Java updaters, Winamp updaters, PowerEdge updaters. Once you've unticked all this bullshit, you click OK and the machine says, would you like to reboot? And if you reboot, those programs won't start. Now we're back to Malwarebytes, which has found three items. Let's have a look what they are. Show results. OK. It's giving us the information here. We tick, tick, tick all the nasties and we press remove selected. And that's a log report which we can close. It says it's now ready to restart the machine. Now what about those files that you can't get rid of because they can't be accessed like cookies. If we go here and double click, it's like this. It's the same thing you get. Access is denied. But we're on cookies, so let's right-click cookies, and I'll show you how we get access. We go to properties at the bottom, and we use security. And we click advanced here. We click the owner tab. We click edit. We change to administrators or your username. Click on replace owner on subcontainer on objects. Click, click OK. Then click OK. OK and come out of the... Now click on Cookies, do Properties again, go to Security, and under Administrators, all these should be ticked. If they're not, click Administrators, click Edit, click all the tick boxes here, Full Allow, click OK, click OK. Now that should allow us to look in the Cookies folder, which you've never been able to do before. Click Everything, right-click, click Delete, click Yes. Now a tip for some of you who get these annoying screens which take over your startup screen. So instead of getting Google, you end up getting something else. And when you click on New Tab, you get something else again. Go up to the address bar at the top and type in about semicolon config and press enter. It warns, warns you that this is dangerous and you should know what you're doing. Click I'll be careful, I promise. Scroll down to browser. Scroll down until you see browser new tab URL. Double click the file and type in here HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com or .co.uk and hit enter. That will change this and then when you click the new tab you'll get the new tab that you want, which will be Google. To change the default opening page, which is your home page, this one, go up to File, Tools, Options, go to the General tab, and either type in HTTP 
semicolon slash slash www.google.co.uk or click use current pages and that will change the way that when you press home which page you go to you can have three search pages come up at once if you wish but if you have several selected when you press the use current pages several will reopen so it might be easier for you to type in www.google.com